Today we're going to be talking about bringing your high cut turf from like two to four inches down to a low cut turf like one inch and below. The reason we're bringing the subject up today is because that's exactly what I did last year and I made a ton of mistakes while doing it. What I did last year was I started cutting at one inch thinking the grass is just going to eventually get used to it and will grow fine. So I went from three and a half inches down to one inch and started cutting. Well, after two or three weeks, that grass never recovered. It would just stayed yellow, it looked gross, and it just didn't work. I was wondering what the hell happened. Well, apparently there's a process you have to go through to get your turf to get used to being cut that low. And I'm gonna explain that process to you guys so you don't make the same mistakes I did. But first things first, let's go get a cut in. So this is the grass I attempted to go low with last year. And what it looks like now on April 5th in Minnesota, it's pretty dang good. Now I have some issues I need to take care of this year. One big one being a bent grass issue. And this is, one area and it was all dormant I ripped out because I could see where it was so I ripped all that out I'm gonna have to reseed that but I have more bent grass over on the edges over here that you can't really tell but it'll end up taking over your whole yard if you don't get rid of it oh geez I also have some bent grass right here that I need to take care of with tenacity this year also. So I'm hoping the tenacity will help me get rid of it. But what we're gonna do today is tackle the backyard, bringing it from high to low. Here I have to stop mowing right in this area because this hill is so bumpy. When I brought the real mower down there, it just it just didn't work. And trying to get up this hill is not fun either. But here's the backyard. And it needs a lot of work. I had a big mole issue last year, which I don't know if you can see. I still have some tunnels over here. I had a mole issue last year that I took care of most of. But after the snow melted, I still had some mounds show up, so there's at least one still around. But the plan is to take this backyard down to about an inch. This area right here is a test plot. So I took this whole area low last year. So there's four different varieties of grass in there. And then around the edge, can't see it right here and around this edge is all my existing grass so I could compare it to the test plot grass. So that's all just starting to wake up a little bit too. But the rest of this is one big mess and we're gonna try bringing it down. I came up with a three-step process to get your grass to get used to being cut low and looking really good. Uh, the first step you're going to want to do is scalp the grass. Now when I say scalp, you're going to be cutting down to the crowns of the grass and it's going to look like crap. So let's say you want your height of cut to start out at one inch and you're going to keep it there for a while. 
What I would suggest to do is cut below that. You need to cut below whatever your height of cut is going to be. I would suggest cutting down to maybe a half inch. So go through, cut at a half inch and collect all those clippings. You're gonna be constantly filling up the bag on your mower, but it's gonna turn into a huge mess if you don't, especially if you're going from like three and a half to four inches, you're gonna be constantly emptying that thing. So go through and scalp your grass. You're gonna see, you're gonna see how uneven your grass really is, but go through, it's gonna look like crap, scalp and collect all those clippings. The last two times I went low in my grass in the front yard and in that test plot, I used the Green Master uh, to do it. But this time I don't think I'm gonna do it just because we had a bush back over here that we cut down and there are sticks everywhere in the grass. I mean, these things are everywhere. There's bigger ones than this. I mean, some of them are as thick as this. I just don't wanna ruin my reel. So I don't think I'm going to do that. Um, I tried pushing with a manual reel through this stuff. And this grass is just way too thick. It'll take me forever to push the manual reel through this. So I think I'm gonna get out the rider, just bring it low and scalp it pretty low. And then maybe I'll take the manual out after that. But yeah, uh, it's gonna be a little different than I did it the first two times, but we'll see how it goes. Now the following day and that took way longer than I thought it was going to. Between mowing the front yard and scalping the backyard it took me probably around seven hours. Um, bringing out the rider mower did not work as good as I thought it was going to. Um, just the grass just kept getting stuck underneath the deck because it was so thick and jumping from one level to the next was just too big of a jump for the grass to come out smoothly so I would at one point I was moving it between level three and level two and a half and I had to hold the lever there between those two because it was just cutting off too much between and it would just get stuck underneath the deck and I was constantly un unclogging it so I thought maybe using the manual reel after I could go as low as I could with the rider would work but 
it was still pretty thick to go down to a half inch so I had to use my other manual reel that was set at three quarters of an inch and went over and that cut pretty good and then I just had to bring out the greens master because nothing else was really working um, I really wasn't worried about the sticks anymore because when I was riding with the rider it wasn't really clanking like it was at the beginning so I think it chopped up most of them and sucked up most of them so I took the greens master out and cut two different ways and that worked pretty good actually we're down to a half inch um, and it looks super bad and super scalped like it's supposed to there's a few brown spots in the grass that I think a lot of people would be worried about that they probably thought they would kill their grass with these spots but there's still crowns in there and this is exactly what my front yard looked like after I did it so I am not worried at all this looks exactly how it should so now we're going to get into dethatching the second step the second step is dethatching and this is a super important step to this process i skipped this step last year and it cost me a lot of time and it cost me a lot of frustration uh, what happens when you don't dethatch is you're going to have all these all this dead material in your grass and your existing grass won't be able to grow into it like it wants to it's just going to stay yellow and stay ugly looking so you need to go in there and dethatch now I did a ton of research on dethatchers last year and I landed on getting the Sunjo. The reason why I got that one is it looked like it worked pretty good and it was budget friendly. So I ended up buying it, got it to my house and honestly when I took it out of the package I thought it felt like a toy. It felt super flimsy, it felt super cheap, I'm, I thought this thing is going to break after I use it one time. But as cheap as that thing feels it works awesome that thing gets up so much material and it just it's honestly one of my favorite tools in the yard to this day it's an awesome machine now when you go to the thatch i like to get aggressive with it to get as much of that dead material out as possible i cranked it on the most aggressive setting and just started going to town i went one way and then i went the opposite way now at one point when i was going with that thatcher it was like bringing up dirt and tons of grass and I'm just like, oh my God, am I killing my grass? But to be honest, your grass is super resilient. You're not gonna kill it. Get aggressive with that thing and get up as much material as you can. not any fun if you only do it once so of course we're gonna do it twice and a word from the wise always go away from your cord otherwise you're gonna be constantly moving that thing so a ton of dead material came up a ton and what that's going to do is let your grass grow into that empty space where all that dead material was and just think of how much water you waste that these this dead stuff sucks up and it just evaporates in so if nothing else you're saving a ton of water by getting that stuff up now you can either bag all this stuff up um, you can rake it up what I like to do is blow it but it's kind of windy today so We'll see how that works, but I'm going to try blowing as much as I can. And this is after dethatching. Looks a lot better. Actually looks like grass. Not sure how well you're gonna be able to see that. But this is one of the brown spots from earlier and you can see all those individual crowns right here. Look at this guy. Those are all alive. This is gonna grow in just fine. But that's what you want. You want to be able to see all the individual crowns of everything. The last step you're going to want to do is to scalp again or to mow at that half inch uh, setting again. 
The reason you're doing that is basically after you do that, you're gonna comb up a lot of loose grass and just basically get a lot of stragglers and then you're gonna wanna even it out so everything is at a half of an inch. Nothing more beautiful than scalping stripes. Once you're done with that, you're basically done and your yard is going to look like shit. It's gonna look like crap for a couple weeks and you're just gonna have to live with it. But after that couple weeks, man does it look super good. Once it starts growing, once it gets to that inch mark, you're gonna to want to mow like every two to three days for at least a month and just keep mowing it at that height to get your grass used to it. It's gonna start filling in super dense and it's gonna start filling in horizontally and it's just gonna to start to look super good. Now a disclaimer with this, I'm not sure how well this works with warm season grasses. I have Kentucky bluegrass. So with warm season grasses or with perennial ryegrass, I'm not sure if this will work exactly the same way, but I know for sure with Kentucky bluegrass, this works perfect. If you guys have any questions or comments or anything like that, leave them below and I'll try to get back to everyone. Otherwise, good luck, uh, real mowing. I mean, honestly, I've never had so many compliments in my life. Uh, so many neighbors come up to me and are just like, what did you do to your grass? It looks like a baseball field. Like, it looks super nice. Just, it's crazy. I've never talked to so many strangers in my life and it's really good feeling knowing that you put in all this hard work and it looks super good and people appreciate it. So if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.